Go to 1-800-Flowers.com. Find the perfect gift. And wow the people you love. Wow. Wow. This is amazing. Taking a look at our live chat, one of our channel members, Butterfly, asking for folks in Florida, where should you be looking to see the space station? You want to be looking low on the horizon to the north. Looks like it'll be about 10 degrees over the horizon. It's going to be going into shadow, though, so it may be a little tricky to spot but we will do our best to try to bring you views as the Passover happens. Starting to see some of the vapor as the super cold liquid oxygen that's being loaded on board the Falcon 9 first stage meets the air that is considerably warmer here in Florida. Starting to see some of that vapor form by the base of the Falcon 9 first stage. I want to thank Mark Casada for a five dollar super chat. Thank you so much, Mark. It says Mike, Crystal, and family are watching and love Space Flight Now coverage. Thank you. Well, thank you for the kind words, Mark, and to all the family there. Hello to all of you. Hope you're having a wonderful Saturday evening, and we appreciate you being with us for our second bit of live launch coverage of the night. T minus 26 minutes, five seconds and counting. I want to thank one of our wonderful channel members, Calistia Lee, for a very generous $20 super chat. Thank you, Calistia. And I will echo her comment here. Hit the thumbs up button, y'all. Let's boost this stream up so others can find it easier. And yes, to the more than 14,000 of you who are watching, first off, thanks for taking part of your Saturday to be with us, either to listen in the background as you keep your eyes to the sky if you're able to watch this in person yourself, or if you're elsewhere beyond Florida and we are your gateway to space, we are glad to be this portal for launch coverage for you. And hitting the like button allows more folks to do the same and access this live coverage. As we continue to step on through the count, mentioned this will be the 18th flight for this particular first stage booster, tail number 1067 in the SpaceX fleet. So while we have time before the big vent begins, Let's go ahead and wind back the clock and look at the history of this first stage booster and its notable flights to get here. Started back on June 3rd of 2021. That was a cargo resupply services or CRS mission to the International Space Station that sent up more than 7,300 pounds of science and supplies to the orbiting outpost. Of course, getting ready to see that fairly soon if we get lucky. CRS-22 was also the second mission under SpaceX's Commercial Resupply Services 2 contract with NASA. Next up was the Crew-3 launch on November 11th, 2021. That was the first time it launched humans. Launch number three came over a month later on December 19th, 21, with the TurkSat 5B launch. B-1067 flew for a fourth time on April 27th, 2022, supporting the launch of the astronauts of the Crew-4 mission. That was the last time that a Dragon flew without a Roscosmos cosmonaut on board. The crew of Crew-4 included NASA astronaut Jessica Watkins, who also became the first black woman to serve a long-duration mission in space. 
It was also the debut of the fourth and so far newest Crew Dragon spacecraft, dubbed Freedom. On July 14th, it was the fifth flight of this booster with another cargo dragon. This was the CRS-25 mission. More than 5,800 pounds went up to the ISS on that flight. Flight number six was the first Starlink mission for this. That was Group 4-34 on September 19th, 2022. Launch number seven was a geostationary satellite, Hotbird 13G for UTELSAT, that launched on November 3rd, 2022. The final launch of that year came on December 16th with the launch of Luxembourg-based SES's O3BM power satellites number one and two. Missions number 9 through 11 were all Starlink satellite missions. Those were 5-2 on January 26th, 5-5 on March 24th, 5-9 on May 14th. That was followed up by the launch on June 18th of 2023. Satria, the communication satellite for Indonesian company PSN. Next three launches... For the next uh, several launches were all Starlink flights. Those were Group 6-10 on August 17th. On October 13th, it was Group 6-22. November 22nd, Group 6-29. And on January 7th of 2024, Group 6-35. That was followed up by the Mariputa 2 launch on February 20th, 2024. And that brings us, of course, to today's launch. Getting ready to lift off in 24 minutes from now. The Starlink 6-45 mission. Taking a look back at the live chat now. want to thank... Uh, channel member Mr. Hellspawn for being a member for eight months. Love the Terminator with the Shades little image there for you. Hellspawn with the comment, remember there are two types of countries in the world, those who have walked on the moon and those that use the metric system. Of course, the uh, Artemis program is looking to expand those who are moonwalkers, starting with the Artemis 3 mission. All those who are going to be landing on the surface of the moon have yet to be named. Probably more than likely that the first two will be Americans. We'll see who else gets to walk on the moon through the Artemis programs following that. A lot of partner countries who are party to the Artemis program, I'm sure, are all very eager to have their nation's astronauts set foot on our own satellite. Gary Skinner, thank you so much for a $2 Super Chat. Really appreciate that. And want to thank Well Reason Superhawk for being a channel member for four months. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, Well Reasoned. I think that is very well reasoned of you. Who, <laughs> and he says, uh, hello all, beautiful night for a launch here in Orlando, Florida. Yes, indeed. Better than 95% odds of good weather for liftoff tonight. Continuing on with the good weather streak that we saw beginning with the UTEL Sat 36D mission just a few hours ago. Also want to thank Aerospace Rocketry for sending our super chat. Noting their dedication to the hobby of high-powered rockets. No T minus 21 minutes. 39 seconds and counting. Glancing back and forth between a couple of screens here in the office, just uh, looking to see if and when we were able to get our eyes on the ISS. That Passover coming up in the next about a minute or so. Of course, as soon as that comes up, we'll be sure to bring it to you if we are able to get that visible on our cameras. about a minute or so away from the start of the big vent as well. Again, that venting happens as the feed lines are chilled prior to second stage liquid oxygen load.
And as we see the start of the big vent, we're also keeping our eyes peeled for the space station. And it looks like, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to bring you views of the ISS as we were hoping to. Oh, actually. So I'll flash across the screen for a moment. I know it's, it's a tricky process to lock into something going at 17,500 miles per hour. Well, we gave it the old college try, and next time that happens, of course, we will endeavor to bring that to you again. With the big vent having wrapped up, we're at T minus 16 minutes, 7 seconds and counting, preparing to begin liquid oxygen load on the Falcon 9 second stage. Taking a look at the live chat, want to thank a few more folks for your support tonight. Really appreciate that. Our thanks to David the Yorkshire Man for a two-pound super chat. Thank you so much, David. Noting that two new spaceports are being built in the UK support launch which is always exciting to see new spaceports come online and we certainly look forward to covering missions from them when that happens our thanks to Julene Irwin as well for two super chat thanks so much Julene welcome to Richard Barton 
channel membership at the pad leader level. Really appreciate your support, Richard. Welcome aboard. Of course, channel membership comes with a number of perks, including discounts at our online shop, shop.spaceflightnow.com, the ability to watch all of our gate-based missions in 4K, and access to our member-only videos here on YouTube. Our thanks to Kyle Boise, or Boyce, for a $5 super chat. Saying that an app that he uses No, T minus 12 minutes, 45 seconds and counting. Coming up, the next milestone will be a T minus 7 minutes when the chill down of the nine Merlin 1D engines gets underway. It involves flowing a small amount of liquid oxygen through the plumbing and turbo pumps to protect them from the risk of thermal shock and damage during the startup sequence. Our thanks to Wilson Clan for our two dollar super chat. Really appreciate that, Wilson. Mitchell Wilbur, thank you so much for a very generous twenty dollar super chat. Supporting us with channel membership. Mitchell says, I like supporting this channel. It sticks to the mission at hand without all the other nonsense that's out there. Will and all involved. Thank you so much, Mitchell. For the kind words and for the support. Thanks also to comp user BS with a ten dollar super chat. Thank you so much, comp user. Thank this is Tim from Portland, Oregon. Love the launches. Two of three watched since Vandenberg, since I was four years old in nineteen sixty nine. Met Jim Lovell, Gene Krantz, and Tom Hanks at the same time, which is very cool, and I'm super jealous. Go SpaceX fans! Each launch is history. We're getting a great view of. This launch and the payload fairings. This is coming from our friend Pete Karstens with Max Q Productions. As the evening has gone on, we're getting a little more heat distortion here than what would be ideal, but unfortunately, there's not a whole heck of a lot we can do about that. That's just what it is at this time of night. Our thanks to Laura Del Zotto for a very generous $50 super chat. Thank you so much, Laura, for supporting us at that level. Really, really appreciate that. Laura says, love SpaceX, and we are so thankful for these broadcast coverages. We're more than happy to bring them to you, and support helps us make it all possible. So we're now just a little over 10 minutes away from the liftoff of the Falcon 9 rocket on the Starlink 6-45 mission. 23 Starlinks on board. 
getting ready to add to the more than 5,600 that are currently on orbit, according to astronomer and expert tracker of satellites, Jonathan McDowell. To date, there have been 6,079 Starlink satellites launched. And again, this will be the 20th Starlink mission in 2024, now less than 10 minutes away. Yeah. T minus nine minutes, 17 seconds and counting. We hit it a little bit earlier on the broadcast, but because the T zero jumped, want to go ahead and talk about the trajectory for this mission for those who may have missed it the first time around. We do have nearly 25,000 of you, so not hard to imagine that there are some who were not with us at the last go-around. Also, be sure to hit the like button to allow more folks to find this live coverage as we cruise on into the final little less than nine minutes before launch now. Falcon 9 rocket is going to be lifting off from Space Launch Complex 40, or Slick 40, over at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. It will send the 23 Starlink satellites on board up to the sixth shell of the SpaceX Starlink constellation, which means it's going to be flying in a southeasterly trajectory heading toward just a little east of the Bahamas. Following stage separation, the first stage booster will be landing on the SpaceX drone ship, a short fall of Gravitas. The other east coast vessel was used, or the other East Coast drone ship, I should say, just read the instructions, was used for the UTELSAT 36D mission just earlier tonight. Go ahead and leave this up for folks for just a moment here, since we do get quite a number of questions about trajectory, and so go ahead and take this in for a moment. If the skies are clear for our friends in southern Florida, you should be able to get a pretty nice view of the Falcon 9 as it cruises on from Florida's space coast. Now about seven and a half minutes away from liftoff, about less than 30 seconds away from the start of the engine chill-down sequence. SpaceX fairings splash down in the Atlantic under the support of parachutes just a little bit further down from the map that we just showed you. SpaceX saves about $6 million with each recovery, so it's an important part of their business model and bringing down the cost of launches to be able to recover and reuse these payload fairings. They are brought aboard recovery vessels like the one you see here. Doug is the vessel that will be used for tonight's mission for this launch. Bob, the other vessel, was used earlier today when it supported the UTELSAT 36D mission. Both ships will be heading back to Port Canaveral. And in fact, this has been the fastest turnaround to date of Launch Complex 39A with the UTELSAT 36D mission. SpaceX continues to push for a more airport-like cadence as time goes on, and they're slowly but surely making their way there. This, of course, set to be the 31st launch for the company so far this year, and the 106th within the last 365 days. So SpaceX certainly moving quickly on those goals. Less than six minutes now to launch. We should be getting views from SpaceX and Mission Audio as well in about a minute. At that point, we'll be able to let you hear the sounds of the pad. As the strong back retract sequence is getting ready to begin about a minute from now.
Before we get to that point, though, I want to thank a few more folks for your support, which is very much appreciated. Lisa from Florida with a $5 Super Chat. Thank you, Lisa. XR Sue with a $5 Super Chat as well. Thank you so much, Sue. Austin with a $2 Super Chat. Thank you, Austin. Nexus FFO, $5 as well. Thank you, Nexus. One of our wonderful channel members, Nelson Rays, gifting five Space Flight Now memberships. Thank you, Nelson. Really appreciate that bit of generosity. And to our newest Falcon 9 members. tanks are pressing for Stromback Retract. Be sure to thank Nelson in the live chat. And if you couldn't tell, we are joined by another voice. That is SpaceX Mission Audio. So as those call-outs are made, I will endeavor to not talk over them so we can all hear those call-outs as they happen. Clamp arms underneath the pail of fairings are going to open up. Strandbag retract has started. As you hear, the transport erector is about to lean back away about a degree and a half from the Falcon 9 rocket. Coming up on the final four minutes before liftoff, our thanks to Bernard Stoat for a $10 super chat. Thank you, Bernard. Really appreciate that support. Jack Yates for a very generous $20 super chat. Thank you, Jack, for supporting us at that level. Dr. Nick... Campitelli for our Super Chat. Thank you, Dr. Nick. And I will refrain from going further into Simpsons jokes since I'm sure that you hear that all the time and are sick of it. I empathize with the uh, Lost in Space references in my name. But Dr. Nick says, thanks for watching at Jetty Park. Love this. You can see there the transport director reclined back away from the Falcon 9 rocket. The lights on at the crew access tower just to the right of the rocket in this viewpoint here. Of course, we saw the first time that that tower was put to use on the CRS-30 mission just earlier this month. Our thanks to Tara Prime for a $5 super chat. Thank you, Tara. Tara says that she had the Feel the Heat tickets to the Falcon Heavy STP-2 mission that launched from KSC in June 2019 and still have the parking placard for it. Amazing. Thanks for all you do. Thanks, Tara. I'm sure that was one lock. Is complete. a wonderful mission to watch. A call for Stage 1 Locks Load complete. Closing out one of the final fueling items here on this Falcon 9 rocket. We're just waiting for confirmation that Stage 2 Locks Load has wrapped up. Our thanks to Robert C. for a $5 super chat as well. And God bless Elon and all the engineers that have changed the future of spaceflight. As we come into the last two minutes, I want to thank just a couple more folks briefly before we put our full attention on this mission. Mel Roberts Herald, channel member with a $5 super chat, saying so excited. This launch will be even more exciting seeing it in the dark of night. And to Catherine Driscoll with a $10 super chat. Stage 2 log load is complete. With that call up, Falcon 9 is now fully fueled with 1 million pounds of propellant, starting the process of ground gas closeouts, which is the venting that you're seeing here on your screen. Catherine says, In the memory of my father who worked for NASA and Lockheed from the early days of the space boom through the space shuttle. Well, certainly appreciate all the work that your father did, Catherine, and all the hard-working men and women across the space Ground industry, gas close both in the public and private sector. We'll come back to these live chats on the other side of the launch, but for now, as we close in on the final minute, let's focus our energy here and concentrate. Make sure we give you all the relevant information as this rocket gets ready to launch in just about one minute. Falcon 9 is in startup. Another good call out here. She hear the call for go for launch from the SpaceX launch director in the next few seconds. Go for launch. And with that call out, SpaceX is ready to lift off its second Falcon 9 rocket of the day. Less than 30 seconds from now.
15 seconds. And here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Engine ignition and liftoff. For the second time today, a Falcon 9 rocket takes to the skies above Florida. The Falcon 9 has cleared the tower at pad 40. Against clear skies, let's listen to the roar of those nine Merlin 1D engines. Getting some great views from our tracking team. This view from Chuck Briggs. This from our own Adam Bernstein. And Pete Karstens with Max Q Productions. Now approaching a minute into flight. A nominal flight so far of the Falcon 9 rocket. Call out that the vehicle is supersonic, traveling faster than the speed of sound. Rocket now passing through max Q, the point of greatest aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle. At this point, we have less than a minute left on the burn of those first stage engines. Coming up, we'll hit a few different markers in rapid succession. T plus two minutes, 26 seconds, we'll hit Miko, or first stage main engine cutoff. That'll be followed by stage separation and then SES-1, or second stage engine start. Then a little after three minutes, this payload, uh, the payload fairings will deploy, exposing the Starlink satellites to the vacuum of space for the first time on this mission. We're now a little more than two minutes into flight. Some brilliant color from those Merlin engines. Do you hear from our friend Pete Carstens with Max Q Productions? As you see Miko. Stage separation. And the ignition of that Merlin vacuum engine. And you see those events on the SpaceX feed and the delay on the right-hand side of your screen. A nice view of Florida from the second stage engine, or the second stage cameras. Coming up on payload fairing deployment in a few seconds. Nice little plume effect jellyfish effects as you see those payload fairings falling away, catching the reflection of the Merlin vacuum engine. And there you see the fairing falling away in the onboard camera views. Now a little over three and a half minutes into flight, you can still very clearly see those payload fairings glinting in P. Karsten's tracking camera view here as you're seeing some stars cruise by. Or rather, the second stage cruise by some stars in the background. Now coming up on the fourth minute into flight, the next event we're looking for is just about T plus six minutes and ten seconds. That's when the first stage entry burn will begin. That burn lasting 23 seconds. And a note from SpaceX that both the Falcon 9 first stage and second stage are following nominal flight paths, so everything on course with this mission so far.
Not a little over four minutes, 48 seconds into this flight. Still getting some great tracking views from Pete. All right, and Bernstein also has his eyes on the second stage as well. We're now just about a minute from the start of the first stage entry burn beginning. Still hearing a good flight path for both the first and second stages of the Falcon 9 rocket as we head past five and a half minutes into flight. Again, that entry burn set to begin at T plus six minutes and ten seconds. We will try to bring you views of the entry burn from our cameras on the ground here if we can. That entry burn now underway. And our Pete Carstens has it. Well done, Pete. It looks like Adam's got eyes on it too in the tracker. This burn just about to wrap up. We see it continuing on in the slight delay from the SpaceX feed here. Stage two, Stage one, after shutdown. Shutdown. With the conclusion of that entry burn, you can see the speedometer has been falling rapidly. Both stages are on a nominal trajectory. And both the Falcon 9 first and second stages continue to follow the flight path that they were intended. Now a little over seven minutes into flight, less than a minute away from the start of the first stage landing burn. Stage one transonic. What that called the Falcon 9 first stage traveling below the speed of sound. Coming upon the start of that landing burn less than 10 seconds from now in real time. The time you want to be looking for for the visual though is at the bottom of your screen. So again, T plus eight minutes and four seconds. Now less than 10 seconds away on the SpaceX feed. Stage two's in terminal guidance. Stage one landing burn. And there we go. Drone ship views should be coming into play on the right hand side of your screen as well momentarily. There we go. Stage one landing like deploy. With the legs extended, we have a touchdown Stage one landing confirmed. Slight wobble there, but it appears to be a good landing of this Falcon 9 first stage booster. Tail number 1067 in the SpaceX fleet landing for an 18th time. And back shut down. Nominal park orbit insertion. And with that call for a good parking orbit, the Falcon 9 second stage will remain in this coast phase until T plus 54 minutes and three seconds, when there will be a quick one second burn of that Merlin vacuum engine, setting it for Starlink satellite deployment at T plus one hour, five minutes and 12 seconds. And so far, we are on track for our first two missions, both ACEs so far from Florida's Space Coast. 
Good launch, good landing from pad 39A and pad 40. Of course, we will hold off to declare full victory on this one for SpaceX until they're able to deploy those Starlink satellites again coming up in just about an hour, a little less than an hour at this point. But moving along well towards a planned triple header tonight. 